Hey, what is going on Xbox and PC fans? It is Josh bringing you guys some awesome news today. Uh, it is that time of the year. It's basically Christmas for gamers and this Christmas is going to be awesome. Uh, AMD drops the mic today and brings out the big guns. Actually, the small guns. They brought out two new GPUs that are going to be based on their brand spanking new Polaris architecture. Um, so I did a video a little while back about NVIDIA releasing two new GPUs as well that took advantage of a die shrinkage. NVIDIA had gone from a 28 nanometer process down to a 16 nanometer FinFET process. And uh, while that is a very, very good thing, NVIDIA has launched two of essentially their larger GPUs, GPUs that contain more transistors, use a larger die size, a physical size. It's like if you had a stamp, they would be two of the larger stamps, where AMD have kind of gone for the lower end mid market, and NVIDIA have gone for the higher end market. You know, the larger GPUs that NVIDIA has put out are going to produce uh, better results, better better performance because there's just more of that chip there. Um, whereas AMD have really printed out two very small chips um, which are very, very cost effective because once again, if you're printing these chips on like a platter size piece of silicone, um, you know, and the stamps are small that you're printing, you know, the chips are small that you're printing, you're going to get a lot more of those chips on each wafer for the same cost. So. You know, it's crazy that NVIDIA has been able to get the kind of performance gains that they've been able to get with uh, Pascal. And that's basically due just to the die shrinkage. There is some other optimizations that have been made moving from the Maxwell architecture over to uh, Pascal. But what AMD have done here is they've actually benefited from two things. Not only have they benefited from the, the die shrinkage and gone down to an even uh, smaller process than what NVIDIA is using in a 14 nanometer process uh, being fabricated by Global Foundries based on Samsung's uh, technology. And I believe Samsung is actually going to help fabricate those chips as well. And those guys have some really, really cool tech as far as uh, you know manufacturing these chips goes. Very, very um, high end and, and very, very nice, just sweet fabrication process that they, that they use. So AMD have benefited from that die shrinkage, but they've also got a massive, massive benefit here uh, because the entire chip, the entire architecture is different. They're moving to uh, basically a CGN 4.0 shader um, is what these GPUs are going to consist of. And these shader cores are, they said, you know, it's basically like three times as efficient as their previous cores were in terms of performance per watt. So these things can go into laptops and uh, even, heck, you know, even smaller form factors, all-in-one PCs, things that are smushed together that have very limited airflow. These things do not create a lot of heat because they're just smaller chips. So there's not a lot there to create a lot of heat, but they're very, very good performers. So uh, tremendous performance per watt able to go in smaller form factor devices such as laptops and all-in-one PCs, etc. Lower cost, um, the highest end model that they have announced is an 8 gigabyte card, uh, 8 gigabytes of DDR5, and it's basically going to have the performance of a 390X, which, and that's rumored, we don't have any actual in-hand benchmarks as of yet, but basically they're talking about taking a uh, $500 GPU which, you know, as of today, that GPU, if you go look at it, um, on Newegg, it's still like 430 bucks, 450 something like that, depending on where you look and what, you know, kind of card you're trying to buy for it, a 390X. But um, that type of performance for 229 bucks, they have a 4 gigabyte variant for 199 of the same GPU. So if you're doing 1080p gaming um, and you want to get in, or you want to get into VR, um, or do some high resolution gaming, just get really good frame rates or what have you, and not put um, you know a lot of heat into your system or draw a lot of power. These are going to be two phenomenal options uh, in terms of GPU choice. And I'm actually trying to sell right now my 390X to some sucker on eBay uh, for 300 bucks. So we'll see if anybody bites on that. Hopefully somebody has not read their internets today and they click that button and I can get the newer, more power efficient, 
GPU into my system. I may even get two of those in there and see, you know, how these guys are going to implement Crossfire moving forward, which is just basically two cards working in tandem together, or three cards, or four cards, and but DirectX 12 and Vulkan API and, and Mantle and open open platforms like that for development that allow the use of uh, multiple GPUs uh, to be a lot easier and a lot more effective and kind of, you know, doing these tandem renderings. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, how that plays out with AMD and also with NVIDIA, but, uh, you know, today is definitely AMD's day. They have also kind of shown their hand as far as their new upcoming CPUs are concerned which is the Zen architecture. And I just upgraded that as well. I just sold uh, my AMD AM3 Plus platform uh, with my old AMD 8350 pile driver CPU, uh, which was phenomenal. Had, you know, four floating point cores, eight integer cores, served me very well for a long time. But I had to get the clock speed on that up pretty high to get a really, really good performance which it did give me, but I was running that at a pretty high frequency and it used a lot of power, just like AMD's previous GPUs. Those were based on a 28 nanometer process, so they were bigger physically uh, and they just required a lot more electricity to, to work properly. Um, you know, they had more leakage, so there was more wasted electricity. You couldn't clock them as high and this new process being rolled out by, uh, by AMD, uh, Samsung and Global Foundries, 14 nanometer FinFET process, like I say, uh, should be absolutely superb in terms of heat output, getting higher clock frequencies, lower amounts of leakage, and really being able to turn themselves off and on very, very quickly to, to make power management very effective. So um, all kinds of good things happening for gamers today from AMD on the PC side of things. But if you are an Xbox gamer, you are not left out. AMD are obviously making the GPUs and CPUs for pretty much all the consoles, have been for a long time, and they are rumored to be doing the same thing once again for Sony, which they've already said, you know, is going to have, I think it's, you know, around around four teraflops of computing power, three point something, something like that, and the new PlayStation Neo, uh, which will have an AMD GPU, but Xbox, guys, it is time to get excited. E3 is literally around the corner, a couple more days and it's going to be kicking off here. Xbox always does their show first and they come out swinging with games, games, games. But my guess is this year there will be a lot of hardware announcements, the least of which will not be the new Xbox Scorpio sporting a brand spanking new AMD Polaris based GPU. And if it has a Zen based CPU in there, Get ready to get your socks knocked off, guys. The Zen CPUs are supposed to have phenomenal increase in IPC, which has instructions per clock relative to their previous generation counterparts, the pile driver architecture, um, which like I say, you know, was very, very fast for me for a very long time. Um, if it is going to be, you know, 40% or 70% or twice as fast as those chips per clock while using less power and making less heat, Couple that with a brand new Polaris-based GPU from AMD that basically is going to bring, you know, 4K gaming, high-resolution gaming, uh, VR, you know, into the reality of, of people with $200 to spend on a GPU. Well, that includes Microsoft. That includes their budget, you know, for a GPU for the next Xbox. So if they can include one of those and they can also include a Zen-based CPU, which I've been saying now for months, it's probably what they're going to do because, let's be honest, They've been getting crapped on uh, by Sony and Sony fans left and right, talking about, you know, Xbox has a weaker console, yada, yada, yada. Well, I guarantee you guys that is about to be ended here really, really soon because when you have a pocketbook as large as Microsoft does and, uh, you know, you get a couple to the chin, you're going to fire back really strong. This is going to be, um, you know, like, like Game of Thrones essentially for the GPU and CPU market, console market. I mean... You know, everybody, everybody wants to rule, and uh, Microsoft, you know, they're like the frickin', you know, the Lannisters of the, um, the landscape. They really do have tremendous, tremendous amount of resources, and, you know, not that Sony and other companies do not, um, but it's just not on the same level at all. Microsoft really can afford to just throw money at this, because for the most part, Microsoft makes, you know, non-tangible uh, items that they sell. They're a software company. They make a piece of software one time, and they can sell it, you know, a hundred million times, and it's and it, they don't have to spend any more money 
on on manufacturing. You know, there's no there's no cost to actually making that other than just licensing, you know, a license out to somebody um, to use that software. And of course, they do have ongoing development and support, etc., which does have some cost there. But you know, Sony traditionally has been manufacturing things like computers and TVs and stereos and cell phones. All of those things of which you know have manufacturing costs associated with them, um, and they do make a certain margin, you know, over and above what those manufacturing costs are, obviously. But it's just not the same thing, and uh, the pocketbooks, you know, as a result of those two companies, are, are pretty lopsided in Microsoft's favor. So, I would expect to see them coming out again with something that is considerably more powerful than what Sony is offering. Um, which is going to be awesome for gamers. I mean, it's, it's great for gamers on PC because it's bringing the price of, of, you know, that performance level down to the mainstream. It's going to be awesome for console owners because, again, you're going to be able to go into the store, grab an Xbox that's simple, you can turn it on, and then, bam, you've got 4K gaming, you have, you know, solid, solid VR gaming, even, like I say, apparently way, way over and above what Sony is going to be offering uh, with their PlayStation Neo and the PlayStation VR. Um, which has proprietary technology that they made themselves, you know, in-house uh, with the help of AMD, I'm sure, and some other partners. But, um, you know, Microsoft, again, these pocketbooks just being so deep, probably is going to go to a partner like Oculus Rift, which I believe is owned by uh, Facebook and spearheaded by John Carmack, the guy that created the first, the very first Doom and Wolfenstein. So some pretty, pretty talented individuals there in terms of uh, marketing and, uh, you know, game design and, and you know, being able to take the, you know, the Oculus Rift, it's a PC-only product, and plug that into your Xbox, you know, Scorpio, whatever they're going to call it, um, and just get some crazy VR gaming is going to be really, really cool for console gamers. Um, and again, this is going to impact PC gamers in a very positive manner as well. So prepare yourselves for this, guys. These things are supposed to be launching in June. And again, E3 is just around the corner. So listen up to Microsoft. I guarantee you they have some announcements to make on the hardware front. Um, and one last thing, guys, this is just another rumor as well. Microsoft are allegedly uh, set to announce the release of basically these tiny little devices that you see all over the place, like Chrome sticks and Amazon Fire sticks and Apple TVs. Basically look kind of like a USB stick that you plug into an HDMI port on your TV and you plug a little power cable into it, probably a micro USB cable or whatever. And these things can deliver content to your TV they don't actually render anything locally. It's very rare that they actually do that. They do have some games rendered locally with basically, you know, cell phone quality graphics, which is just fine. But, um, you know, they're able to stream video and they're able to do that very, very well over high speed networks that people have available to them today. And if that's the case, you know, will Microsoft announce streaming services for gaming? Will they announce streaming services for other forms of media, etc., like movies or TV? being delivered through those devices, but they're going to try and recapture some of that entry-level market in terms of media consumption. So look for those devices to be $30 to $50 and be able to deliver the Xbox at least via streaming. Um, you know, like if you have your Xbox in the living room and you take one of those and plug it into your TV in the bedroom, you know, I would guess that at a minimum you'd be able to stream your Xbox One to that stick and put it on another TV and just be able to extend your experience without having to go and buy an entirely new console, which is going to be awesome. You know, you basically buy one console, an Xbox One or an Xbox Scorpio, whatever they're going to call it, get some of these little sticks, plug them into your other TVs around the house and have access all over the place while only having to buy one device. So that's going to be awesome. Again, E3 is coming up. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of announcements right around the corner. So look forward to this stuff. There's going to be games, 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 and there's going to be some sweet hardware announced as well, guys. So I'm super excited for it. I hope you guys are too. Um, hope you guys are having a phenomenal, phenomenal week. If you're not, um, you know what? Take a look around, man, because this is uh, this is pretty tough to beat. We don't, uh, you know, we don't have to be here at all. And um, you know, it's just my opinion, but you know, getting to be here is. Uh, pretty good thing. I hope you guys are all, um, you know, grateful for it. I think we're all pretty fortunate if we're sitting in, sitting in a room somewhere listening to the YouTube. But um, anyway, if you got problems, I hope they get better. And um, yeah, guys, I don't know. I, this, is, uh, this is pretty awesome stuff coming down the pipeline. But um, at any rate, um, yeah, 
you guys, uh, I got some links in the description if you want to check some of this stuff out. And other than that, hope you guys have a phenomenal day, and I will talk to you soon. See ya.